In this video, we solve problem 14.6.020 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. We're asked to use a triple integral to find the volume of the solid bounded by the graphs of the equations. We have z equals two times x times y, and we're told that x ranges between zero and six, and y ranges between zero and six. And they said set up a triple integral. So we know that volume is this triple integral over the solid region Q of dV. The integrand is just an implied one. And there are lots of different ways that we could write dV. dV is dx dy dz. But since multiplication is commutative, you could do dx dz dy or dy dx dz, or you could do dy first, integrate with respect to y first and then z and then x or integrate with respect to z first and then y and then x, or integrate with respect to z first and then x and then y. Any one of those would be fine, but we tend to stick to these last two because of the way that we are accustomed to visualizing things. So I tend to think of z as going from some bottom surface to some top surface. So if z is a function of x and y here, and then z is equal to a function of x and y here, I would integrate from g of x and y to f of x and y, integrating with respect to z first. And then I either integrate with respect to y and then x, or x and then y, depending on the geometry of the region that we're integrating over. We look at the projection of that solid region Q that we're interested in onto the XY plane. And then we want to describe that as simply as possible. Now, in this case, they tell us that X is between zero and six and Y is between zero and six. So we're just looking at a square of side length six. So it really doesn't matter if we integrate with respect to Y first and then X or X first and then Y, either way, X and Y are going from a constants to constants. Um, so this is the um, generic setup uh, for um, something that looks like this over this region R, which happens to be this square of side length six. Um, but for us, it would, it would be helpful if we knew where Z started and where Z stopped. Um, now we were actually given a graph of the um, volume that we're interested in. So I want to share that with you before we find these bounds. So here's our graph. We see that we're starting in the xy plane. That's where z is equal to zero. And then we're going up to this surface, z equals two times x times y. So our bottom function is just the function that defines that xy plane, z equals zero. And then we go up to the top function, two times x times y. So we have the integral from zero to six of the integral from zero to six of the integral from the bottom function, which is z equals zero to the top function, which is two x y. And then we integrate with respect to z first and then y and then x, or you could integrate with respect to x and then y, either one would be fine. Now you can do the other orders of integration. Um, you can always integrate from some function z or x equals some function of y and z to some other function of y and z. So you'd be integrating from a sort of a back function to a front function here. Here, we'd be integrating from maybe a left function to a right function, y going from some function of x and z to some other function of x and z. But we don't tend to think of it that way. We tend to think this way of z going from a bottom function to a top function. Um, so that helps us. Um, and that makes it pretty easy to set up this integral. Okay, so now it's set up. Remember, if you want to evaluate a triple integral, you start on the inside and you just work your way out. So let's do that. Got the integral from zero to six of the integral from zero to six of the integral from zero to x uh, y to um, with respect to z and then with respect to y and then x. And our initial integrand is just an implied one. I leave the outer bounds alone. 
and I take the antiderivative of this one with respect to z. The antiderivative of one with respect to z is just z. Then you want to evaluate from z equals zero to z equals two times x times y. So I get two xy minus zero, which is just two xy. And that's my new integrand. Notice that that is the double integral we would have set up to find the volume under the surface. It's the same thing. Um, and that's exactly what we get when we evaluate that innermost integral with respect to z. It's the integral over the region r of that function f of xy, where we're trying to find the volume under f of xy or between f of xy and the xy plane um, above some region when that function is non-negative over that region. Okay, so we anti-differentiated, we substituted in the upper bound and the lower bound, and we subtracted. Now we're going to evaluate this integral with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So bring the 2x down because it's constant, and then we'll use the power rule for that y. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. The 2s reduce. Then you want to evaluate from y equals 0 to y equals 6. Uh, 6 squared is 36. So we get 36x. And there, and then when we evaluate at y equals 0, we get 0. So we have 36x minus 0, which is, of course, 0. Or excuse me, 36x minus 0, which is, of course, 36x. And then we keep going. This is just a calc one integral. It's a pretty simple calc one integral. So we evaluate that. We'll just use the power rule, bring the 36 down, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Oops, that should just be a six. Evaluate from x equals zero to x equals six. Two goes into 36 18 times. So we have 18 times six squared minus zero. And that's our answer. And so I get 648, that was volume, so that'll be units cubed, and if you're saying what units, it's the same units that we're using to measure x, y, and z, and that is allowing us to find the volume of the surface, or excuse me, the volume under the surface given by z equals 2xy above this square um, where each side length is 6. Um, in the xy plane. Just to share one more time, um, we're trying to find the volume of this surface that's shown right here, or excuse me, the volume under this surface, or the volume between the surface and the xy plane that is shown right here. And that's what we, we did. It turns out that that volume is 648 units cubed.